Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So in this YouTube video, I'm gonna make it super simple. This is just gonna be how to make sure your RAM is not causing any FPS drops and is not causing any blue screen or crashes, all right? So RAM is a very, very, very important part in our PC because once the CPU cache is getting all used up, then all that information is being trans transferred over to the RAM. And if your RAM is fast enough, then you'll gain more FPS, more information will be sent to the RAM, then RAM will be be able to process it faster so on and so forth but there comes an issue where whenever you get to a certain speed of ram or if you have certain brands of ram sticks where you're just gonna error they're gonna try to process information but they're gonna error because the ram is unstable so in this video we're gonna be checking our ram speed making sure it's not too high for our specifications because for example if you're on ryzen you really can't go above 3800 megahertz and this is for ryzen fifth gen and under you can't really go above 3800 megahertz if you go above that you won't be one-to-one -one ratio with your fclk what that basically means is if you go above 3800 megahertz you're gonna get half the speed that you are running at because it's not one-to-one -one ratio with the memory controller on your cpu so the memory controller and the ram sticks have to run at the same speed unless you're on ddr5 which is completely different but this is going to be mostly for ddr4 ddr5 you can do the same thing for stress testing but it's a little more intuitive and you have to know a little bit more about background information in DDR5. I'll try to include some of that, but we're going to mainly focus on DDR4 for now. The first thing you're going to do is open up your task manager, go to performance tab, go to memory, and you want to make sure this does not say 2133 megahertz or 266 megahertz. If it says that, then one, you either don't have XMP, two, your motherboard might not support XMP, or the maximum speed it supports is 266 megahertz, or three, you haven't enabled XMP in your BIOS. And you just want to make sure you enable XMP in your BIOS before we do anything. And if you're getting any blast screens or just instability after you enable it, that generally means that the speed you're trying to run the XMP profile is at is too high or the voltage is too low or the RAM sticks are just unstable on XMP. And the last part is kind of unfortunate because there are some RAM stick brands that end up being mostly unstable for a lot of people. And that could be Corsair, G-Skill, RGB, RAM sticks, the default ones, and some other cheap RAM sticks that you'll find on Amazon. So in the description, I'll leave basically all the RAM sticks that I recommend for everyone but i'm gonna leave mostly just one of them and this one should work for intel and amd and it's ddr4 and these sticks are going to be basically the best sticks you could buy on the market that are a decent speed and plug and play you don't really have to do any manual tuning you just plug them in run them on xmp and you're pretty much all good to go so i'll leave those in the description and cop them if you want it doesn't really matter but ram sticks do help a ton if you are on a intel system or amd system they don't really help on x3d amd cpus so if you're on a 5800 x3d you really have to worry about ram just make sure you're running at xmp at least and you're pretty much good to go so we're going to move on to basically if your ram speed is too high so if this says 4000 right here then you have to make sure it's stable 4000 megahertz is a super fast speed for ddr4 and it might not always be stable and it might not always be running right for example on 12th gen intel sometimes if you set it to 4000 megahertz the memory controller will run at gear 2 and what gear 2 does is the same thing as the amd controller above 3800 megahertz it starts to bug out and it starts running the memory controller at half the speed of the ram so you gain half the benefit of their high ram speed so in that case you would drop it down to either 3800 megahertz and force gear 1 and bios and to do that you just go to bios and then you figure out where your gear mode setting is at you can pretty much google this and you find it out pretty quick which setting it is make sure that's set to gear one and turn on your xmp profile if you boot good make sure to test stress test it with the program we're about to use if you don't boot try lowering the speed even more but again guys xmp turning on xmp you might have to reset your cmos so if you do enable xmp and you're not getting no boot whatsoever even after restarting you're gonna have to reset your cmos and to figure that out you can just google it or watch a video on youtube on how to reset cmos but super simple nothing too risky nothing really crazy just figure that out if that happens to you but for most of you you shouldn't really have that it'll either say 
overclocking failed and you can just revert it or it will just boot so make sure you have xmp enabled make sure it's not too fast if it's too fast then you're not going to get the full benefit of it so make sure to drop it down by either 200 megahertz or by 400 megahertz and test it around from there if you have bad sticks and they don't work on xmp just cop the sticks that i put in the description plug those in and run those on xmp you won't have really have an issue and you really won't really have to bother about stress testing them so once we basically figured out that we're running on gear one for intel 12th 11th and 13th gen if you're on ddr4 and you're on intel 11th 12th or 13th gen you want to make sure you are running on gear one if you're on ddr5 it's kind of different but if you're on ddr4 you want to make sure you're on gear one if you are on ddr5 you want to make sure you're on gear two for ryzen if you're on fifth gen ryzen or under generally don't go above 3800 megahertz and for second gen ryzen you really can't go above like 3200 megahertz so make sure you're under 3800 megahertz or at there because if you go on 4000 you're gonna have basically half the performance that you should be getting or you might be one of the very 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 few people that can actually run the fclk one-to-one -one ratio with 4000 megahertz if you're that lucky if you lucky you but most of you are not going to be able to run it at one-to-one -one ratio with your memory controller on your cpu so make sure again 3800 megahertz now we're going to move on to basically stress testing a ram and visit the link in the description and we're going to download test mem5 all right everyone so once you visit the link in the description it'll take you to this mega website to download this program when I press download and make sure you have 7-zip or WinRAR installed and once you have it just open it up and then press extract and extract it to some place where you can access it alright so once you've extracted it just open up the folder it makes and we're gonna run tm5.exe you're just gonna double click on this and it's gonna start stress testing your RAM already but we're not gonna run this basic stress test because it is gonna take forever to show an error if there is one. so click load config and exit and in that same place where you have it you're gonna go to the bin folder and you're gonna choose the extreme one at anta77.cfg double click on that it's gonna exit open it up again and as you can see customize extreme one and to 77 this is what it should say whenever you loaded the profile properly so let this run for about maybe even an hour maybe even two hours this depends on how much ram sticks size you have so if you have 32 gigabytes it's gonna take longer if you have 16 gigabytes Gigabytes, it's going to take about two hours or so 32 gigabytes obviously higher 64 gigabytes even more so you want to make sure you can run this overnight make sure there's no errors on xmp if there isn't you're pretty much good to go ram is out of the question ram is not causing you any issues now the second thing could be that you do have an error so if you do have an error you can try dropping down the speed a little bit and testing there and if it still happens again you still get an error then you could try disabling xmp and testing again if you get an error without xmp that means the ram sticks that you have you need to replace them ASAP. the link is in the description for some new ones and those shouldn't have any issues but that's pretty much it for stress testing your ram figuring out if it's unstable or not and yes getting one error even one that means your ram is unstable sad to say that but that means your ram is unstable if you even get one error so drop down the speed or turn off xmp test again if you get an error with xmp off that means your ram sticks are bad completely you need to replace them asap so hopefully this helps some of you guys and hopefully some of you actually fixed some of the blue screens crashes or fps slash stutters that you've been getting and it might have been because of your ram so if, if that was the reason why drop down a comment but otherwise i'll see you guys in the next one peace out all right guys if you want a full pc optimization service where i basically meet all your needs for gaming lower input lag better fps smoother gameplay all of that checked off all that done for you link in the description book an optimization off of my website and I'll talk to you very soon. Second thing is going to be if you want a full PC built for you, customized for you, optimized for you, and tested for you, head over to the second link right under my scheduling website to order a new PC built by me today, and you'll get it in two weeks' time. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much it. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.